The other day, an audio buddy of mine, Mark, bought a Deckwear SE84 UFO2 integrated amp and he told me this is the best tube amp he has ever tried at his place. He would even pay $5,000 for it. Now, Mark has borrowed 70% of the amps I've reviewed recently and for him to say this Deckwear amp is his favorite amp, this made me go like, what? Now, for those of you who have not seen the video of his place, I will link it in the first comment. So Mark offered to lend it to me for a few days while he is away on vacation. And after trying this Deckwear amp, I have to say, man, oh, okay, I get it. So today, let's talk about the Deckwear SE84 UFO2 tube amp. Now this is not going to be an in-depth review because I only borrowed it for a few days. I did not even try to rolling with it. So I don't know its full potential. Now for those of you who are living under a rock and have never heard of the current hottest deckware SE84 UFO2 amp, this is a class A 2.3 watt single-ended tube integrated amp. You know what? I would love to be in that meeting where they decided on the name of this amp. UFO 2? What was the logic behind it? Yes, I know UFO stands for Ultra Fidelity Output, but I can't help but think of flying saucers when I see the name. Now, why do I call this the hottest amp right now? Now, go to their website. There's an Excel file showing 700 people waiting in line. Now, this video, man, is going to piss off a lot of people because some of you might want to buy one after watching this video and you probably have to wait like eight months before receiving yours. The amp does have a unique design and although simple, I find it quite elegant. Little things here and there shows me that you no, know, there's a lot of attention to detail. For example, the volume knob is made of wood or on the top of the amp, there are like patterns on the metal. The wood side finishing it's really, really nice. And above all, if you look at the manual, you can tell whoever is running the show over there is an audio file. Now, it might sound logical to you. Obviously, there are audio files working in a company that produces audio file gear. But I'm telling you, man, I'm trying to build an amp right now. And I learned that there are engineers and there are audio file engineers. The only thing that makes me scratch my head, okay, with this deckware amp is why put the meters on top? Like, I can't see it when I'm sitting down. So, what's the point? Um, this UFO2, I'm going to call that UFO2, retails for 1004 USD and it is handmade in the USA with a lifetime warranty. Now, according to their website, it can handle dip as low as 1 ohm with no loss of base control. It is point-to-point -point wiring with no circuit board and for some, point-to-point -point wiring means better sound and it can last longer. Now, I'll list out all the tubes it supports here on screen. Now, interestingly, it uses a non-popular power tube, 6P15P-EV. Once again, I would love to be in the room where they name this tube to understand the logic. Apparently, according to the website, you can use either EL84 or this weird tube. The benefit of using this tube is it feels faster while the EL84 is warmer, according to them. So let's start with the negatives. Okay, um, there is no remote. Seriously, man, these old school engineers need to get with the times. Last I checked is 2021 and it drives me nuts that a few of these Class A single-ended tube amps I've been recently testing have no remote. I should start a movement to boycott every audiophile gear with no remote. Okay, putting joking aside, the other issue is this amp only outputs 2.3 watts. So let's talk about it. If you go back to my early videos, I've said things like, unless it is 200 watts, it sucks. Now, I have to admit that I am wrong about that. You see, when I first started my auto journey, I had entry-level gear 
that is maybe 50 watt to 100 watt. At one point, I went from 50 watt amps to 200 watt amps. The difference in performance was spectacular. However, what I did not consider was I went from buying $500 amps to $4,000 amps. And I thought the jump in performance is solely due to the watts, right? the power. What I should have realized instead is what is more important is the quality of watts and not just the quantity of watts. Sure, more watts can give you more bass with some speakers. My aha moment came one day while I was looking at the meters on my Macintosh MC352 power amp. Now that is a 300 watt power amp, so it's pretty powerful. And I was expecting the meter to hover around 150 watt while playing music at normal volume. I was shocked to see it using only around one or two watts. Now, even with the Quad 2905 hard to drive speakers and listening at normal high volume, it only uses 20 watts on average. So the only time I see the meters maxing out on the Macintosh amp, like hitting two 300 watt, was with the Wilson Sabrina speakers, but that was pushing the volume really loud in a very big room. Most of the time I use maybe one or two watts and after trying maybe 80 amps and more at my place, I realized quality is more important than quantity. Now I would take this Deckward 2 watt amp over a Crown Class D 1000 watt amp any day of the week. Now, of course, having both quality and quantity would be the best, but you know, it's expensive. Now, sure, there are limitations to what two watts can do, and most of you probably know to get the best out of this amp, you would need sensitive speakers. Having said that, I did try with a few speakers with different sensitivity with surprising results, and I'll come back to it later. Okay, so let's move on to the positives. This is a single-ended Class A2 amp. As I mentioned in my previous video, my experience with most amps like this is that they usually have a very nice linear mid-range, right? Good body in the mid-range. Overall presentation is linear. And you don't usually have fat bass. Now I mentioned in the past, I don't find Class A single-ended amp on the warm side, right? They have body in the mid, but I find them more on the lean side in the sense, in the sense, that there is no bump in the upper mid base. Okay, now this could be a problem of definition, right? Warm and body. Some people might consider body in the mids equal to warmth, but I define warmth as a bump in the upper mid base. Next, Thomas, let me guess. This amp is excellent in the mid range, but the rest is whatever. Some of you might be thinking that. Now, like the Rysong A12 I reviewed recently, great mid range, but everything else is meh. This UFO2 is different. The top end is refined enough that you know you're not listening to a budget amp. It sparkles really well with just enough transparency. It is not ultra transparent, like my more expensive reference gear, but I would argue for some, it is a good thing. Because for those people, it has just the right amount of detail and transparency. So as a result, this amp is non-fatiguing, but yet it does not achieve that non, like being non-fatiguing by rolling off the top end because it does sparkle really well. The mid-range band is fantastic. And as I mentioned before, it has lots of body. Usually I would say with all these low power amps, the bass is adequate. With the UFO2, I would say it is adequate plus one. It is more than adequate with sensitive, with sensitive speakers. How is the speed on it? I would say it is definitely not slow. The sound stage is great. It is like multi-layer. Now, of course, unless you have sensitive speakers, don't expect to play it loud. But what is very interesting, okay, is this, this two watts feels very stable and strong. It feels more confident, is able to play louder, and there's less distortion at higher volumes compared to some of the other low power two amps that I recently reviewed. So I'm like, huh? It baffles me, like, this amp, where is, the, where is it getting its power from? It has like a miniature small transformer, but it has solid power. So why do I like this amp? Look, man, these days, most gear I get sounds pretty good. So for me to like it a lot, 
it has to stand out in one or two things. And it just so happens those two things, this AMP excels at, are stuff I'm looking for in a tube amp. First, amazing decay when paired with my Silverline Sonata speakers. Glorious decay. Note seems to extend a bit longer, and as a result, it creates this airy holographic multi layer sound stage. Fantastic. Love the decay. Second thing, the mid range sounds sweet to my ears. Now, I've mentioned in the past, I usually don't find Class A single ended amps sweet sounding. Usually, my other Class A single ended amps have a linear mid range that has a lot of texture. This amp, yes, it has texture and it is sweet sounding, which is surprising for me. Because that for me usually is in the 300B tubes territory. Even the Ryzen A50 amp that uses 300B tubes is not as sweet sounding as this amp. But okay, but keep in mind this amp is like double the price of the Ryzen A50. The way I define sweetness in the mids is when the combination of softness, roundness, non-aggressiveness, that combo, is just right to my taste and it gives me that nice, pleasant, heart-moving feeling. Obviously, my definition of sweetness might not be yours, so some of you might not find it sweet, right? So sometimes it's a question of taste. However, you know, to me, it is sweet sounding and that, that is all I care. I don't care what you think. I'm just kidding. Now, I can go on and on and tell you other amazing things about this amp, but I think I'll stop here. Because just these two things are more than worth its asking price. Now, next, I got a chance to try with a few speakers and my results were interesting. With the Spendor S3-5R2 stand mount speaker, 85 dB sensitivity, the mids were great, but it sounded a bit flat. With my unknown sensitive modified Focal 836W, which has a really powerful bass, the UF-02 was not strong enough to bring out more than 60% of its bass. Now with my 93 dB sensitive Silverline Sonata, it sounded awesome. That was when I noticed the decay was very, very nice to die for. With the 90 dB Triangle BR-03, the deck work can drive it no problem at normal listening volume. It sounded very good. And you'll be surprised with the amount of bass you will get from it. The most interesting speaker I paired it with. It was my Exemplaire Model 3 96 dB sensitivity speaker. This speaker is not easy to work with. The problem whenever I deal with expensive gear is it usually is not easy to get it to sound good. Now I try many different amps with this Exemplaire speaker ranging from like a few hundred dollars to a few thousand dollars and I would say the best one so far is with the Class D Bell Canto Black, and that amp I reviewed uh, recently, but that amp is $20,000. The next best one driving these exemplar speaker, I would say is either this UFO2 or my Luxman SQ150, but that costs double of this deckware. I probably have to buy a deckware just because of these exemplar speakers. Now deckware, if you are watching this video, come on man, send me something else to review. I would even pay you for it. So. In short, when it comes to speakers, my takeaway is as long as you're listening to it at normal volumes, 89 dB sensitivity and up should be okay. Whatever, whatever speaker I try, even if the deck where I was not able to drive it with good bass or powerful bass, every single one of my speakers sounded spectacular with this nice euphonic mid-range. And for some, that's all you, all you need, right? So let's wrap it up at this point. In this video, I omitted a lot of stuff that I wanted to talk about because of my short time with the amp. Now, I hate my audio buddy, Mark, for lending me this unit because whenever I get audio gear I like and I have to return it, I don't know, man, it leaves a slight bitter taste in my mouth. To make something at this level for this price in the USA, is quite amazing. The performance is good enough that I think even if you have high-end like $10,000 solid state amps and you want to pick up a tube amp as a you know, second occasional amp for your speakers with decent sen sensitivity, this deck 
is good enough for you to consider, even if you have very high-end amps. Now, I will end the video with a short video clip from Mark. Now, Mark is the, well, it's the audio buddy who lent me this amp. Uh, I have asked him to share his thoughts on the Deckware UFO 2. And with that, I will see you next time. Hey everyone, Mark here. Thomas asked me to put together a video with uh, my thoughts and you know, perspective on the Zen. I'm on a road trip out in Atlantic Canada. I'm in PEI. It's actually sunrise. I'm having a coffee, so I'll just share a few quick points on what I love about uh, the Zen Triode. First and foremost, um, what I love about it is it's a tube amp that doesn't try to be anything more than a tube amp. It's not trying to be something different or trying to be a tube amp and a solid state amp. And even though it's small, it's got big sound. In terms of playing loud with my Klipsch Forte 3 speakers, um, I didn't, I never went past three o'clock or three quarter volume because it was loud and it was amply loud. So while, um, you know what, people are going to, you know, look at it and think, oh my God, just a few Watts, uh, it, with the right speakers, high sensitive speakers, you, like you can play this thing as loud as you want. The sound that I've gotten from the Zen is the purest, sweetest, smoothest sound, and I love it. Uh, it's just the sound that's just so engaging. The closest I've got, and this is what I told Thomas, he lent me a pair of monoblocks, Onyx uh, monoblock uh, tube amps, and that sound was great. That was a phenomenal experience. I just really loved it. It was very engaging, but the Zen amp just takes it to a new level. A haunting beautiful voices, jazz, the horns in jazz, the trumpets, you know, the saxophones are just incredibly sweet sounding, guitar solos, drum solos. Drum solos are incredibly detailed. This is the other thing in terms of dynamics, the dynamics are just right. There's a lot of amplifiers that are just a bit over accentuated. They're engaging when you hear them the first few times, but they don't have the right balance. So the Zen amp just strikes this beautiful balance. The last point is uh, it's engaging, but it's not fatiguing. So that's probably the greatest compliment. I, I just love listening to music and with the Zen, I can listen for hours uh, and it's not fatiguing. It's just put the music on, make dinner, uh, sit down in the listening chair, you know, put vinyl on and or play through uh, the DAC, just play music for hours, and it just always sounds good. I never get the sense that it's a bit edgy. It, it's, just, it's just, the sound is just, you know, incredibly engaging, and you don't overanalyze it. You just listen to the music and just love it. So that's my feedback, and you know what? We live in a gorgeous country out here. For those who haven't visited Atlantic Canada, get on a road trip and Go visit the, the eastern seaboard. It's a great place to see. All right. Thanks.